Now let's talk about climate action. GTIC has turned, uh, well, he has turned the community wastewater treatment plant into an aquaculture facility that's breeding fish, which is safe for consumption. This process is saving the environment while ensuring food security. That is the story of Trimark Aquaculture Company, a fish farming company, using innovative ways of mitigating the impact of climate change. So this is part of the Joy News Climate Focus project, which highlights the work of entrepreneurs whose innovations will, will help combat climate change. It is brought to you by the Ghana Climate Innovation Center, GCIC. Joining us via Zoom is Maki Ebua Ejapo, who is the founder and center director for Trimark Aquaculture Center, as well as Dan Abebio. Hello, gentlemen. Thank you for your time this afternoon. <laughs> Okay, it looks like I'm not hearing somebody. Uh, you want to work on that for me so I can hear you. I do hear one of you, I believe is, uh, uh, well, okay. Can you hear me? Hi. Yes, 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 I can hear you. Okay, so you- Hello, you, I can also hear you. Okay, you are uh, Dan or Mark? Okay. I'm Daniel. Daniel, Daniel, thank you for joining us this afternoon. And so, Mark, thank you as well. Daniel, let me start with you. Do tell us about your solution. Hello? Yes, Daniel, do tell us about your solution. Okay, thank you. So, um, we at Ghana Climate Innovation Center support businesses which are involved in climate adaptation and mitigation, you would agree with me that currently, um, even with the sophistication we have, it becomes very difficult to predict the patterns of the world. And, and that is something we all need to deal with because um, if we don't do that, we'll get to a situation where our very likelihood will be challenged and it will endanger the very species we find um, on climate on planet Earth. So what we do is we look out for businesses which are involved in this space and we support them through a World Bank funded project to ensure that they are sustainable, they are scalable, and they scale to ensure that um, mother and climate Earth um, thrives. And so uh, let me bring you in, um, Mark. Mark, can you hear me? Yes, please. I can. I can hear. Great, you. Mark. I want to hear about your climate uh, solution. You are into. You are breeding fish. That's edible, but that's also impacting the environment positively. Tell us about it. Okay. Thank you. Um, Climate Aquaculture Center was motivated by some global and national pressing issues, such as uh, this indiscriminate discharge of untreated wastewater into the environment. This untreated wastewater had a tendency of emitting harmful gases that could cause climate change. However, wastewater is noted to have high level of nutrients that can be tapped for reuse. Due to this, Trimark has designed a business model where we channel community wastewater discharge from various households at the Pastra Estate in Kumasi to a central point where we treat the wastewater to WHO and EPA acceptable policy level for reuse of fish production. Okay, let me come to you, uh, Dan. Uh, you, you, you did talk about the importance of, of climate action, but I want you to take us through that again. Why is it even important for people, individuals, and all of us to support entrepreneurs, especially who are focused on climate change solutions uh, like, like Mark and, and, and others? Thank you. Thank you very much. So like I did say, um, growing up, my, my grandmother could predict the weather pattern without in the next two hours it will rain and, and trust you me she will never fail. Today with the widest of 
sophistication we have, we still have challenges predicting the patterns of the weather. Now, this tells you that there is a climate emergency and, and, and all hands would have to be brought on, on, on the table to ensure that we deal with this. So if you see a lot of the G8 countries contributing and, and de de devoting funds to ensure that we deal with climate change issues, that should tell you that it is an emergency which calls for everybody to, to, to deal with. But the most important thing is that if you have businesses that are supporting in this agenda and helping to mitigate and ad adapt the problems of climate change, it is only proper and important that you support these businesses to ensure that they scale and they grow so that more of these effects will be mitig mitigated. It's good that you mentioned the businesses and supporting them. I wanted to give us an overview of the kind of support that your organization is providing to these entrepreneurs whose uh, businesses are focused on climate action. Thank you once again. So we are structured um, by... Pro we bring the businesses into what we call an incubation and we provide them with a one whole year of support, ranging from giving them entrepreneurial training to change their mindset. What happens is that a lot of businesses are really not focused on their business. They, most of them move, jump from one, one um, pitch event to the other. So the focus to so we take them through this training to change that mindset, that is one. Now, once you have a person who is willing and able to drive their business, one thing you need is the skills. So we provide them with the skills, what we call financial management training to properly manage their finances. We take them through some pitch, pitching events to ensure that once their businesses are growing, they are able to pitch to potential investors to raise the needed funding that will be injected into the business. So that is how, and we structure it in this way, we call what we call entrepreneurship and venture acceleration, where we provide this sort of training. We have mm. access to finance where we provide this financial management training and also the pitch event and linking them with external funding sources or other funding sources okay. to grow their business. There is technology and product development, which is working with these businesses to ensure that at the end of the day, if they have a solution that requires some testing of a sort, these people support them. So for instance, Trimark, there had, there had to be actually a lot of testing to ensure that the wastewater that is coming in is, is, is actually feasible and right for the fishes that are, that are red. So these are some of the uh, solutions or the support we provide to the businesses. There's also the the, the policy angle where we liaise with government to ensure that the bottlenecks faced face by these businesses are addressed through, through policy changes and things um, like that. So it, it, overall, this is the kind of support we provide to these businesses. Okay, I'll come back to you for your final words, which will be for you to elaborate on um, the sort of result or impact that this uh, your support or your intervention has made in ghana but let me bring again mark in mark he's just spoken about the kind of supports that the organization has given you i i want to find out from you what from your perspective how can we replicate what you are doing how can we replicate it in other regions and communities and whilst you're answering that you can just chip in you know the point he makes about the support they give you and how it has helped. Thank you very much. The raw material for our business is community wastewater, which is continuously discharged from many households in Ghana. Therefore, Metropolitan Assembly, Municipal and District Assembly and Real Estate Developers should incorporate this uh, climate innovation into the uh, community planning. Climax is ready to partner with uh, interested parties to replicate the ideas to other regions and communities. Coming to the issue where we support, um, coming to the issue where we receive the support from ECIC, since the raw material for our production is basically wastewater, which requires effective and efficient technology for treatment, um, Climax is proud to gain support from DTIC to construct biogas digesters 
that enhances the whole water treatment process or fish production. As how Dan said, the water testing has been also done, and we know the quality and the state of the water, which is within the acceptable limit defined by the World Health Organization. However, I will take this opportunity to acknowledge some other um, partners too, like the KMA of Mass Metropolitan Assembly, with enterprises and um, International Water Management Institute and the last government also in helping us how DPIC helps Prima. Mark, thank you very much. And this sounds like an amazing intervention. I, I, I would want to test your fish, but do people complain about the fish being grown in, in, in wastewater, first of all, sometimes? Oh, that person. Hello, can you come again? Yes, I was just asking. I'm saying that I'm, I'm looking forward to tasting some of your fish sometime. But, but I wonder whether people complain about the use of wastewater to grow the fish. Oh, thank you very much for this concern. This concern, this perception was one of the challenges we encountered during our trial phase and we try to put in an intervention to rectify that mentality so what we did was that in the waste, in the treated waste water we have the fish in there that serve as a good stock and they are not for consumption but we rather take the, the egg from this good stock send it into a hatchery which is still on site where we produce fingerlings and these fingerlings are collected in a concrete tank, and this concrete tank receives very clean water from underground. So it is this fish that is consumed, but the what? Okay, that's Mark, uh, Mark Yewejapon, founder of Trimark Aquaculture Center. They're using wastewater to grow fish. Very good fish, uh, by the way. Let me end this conversation with Dan Abibio, who is with GCIC. Dan, I want you to elaborate for us the results or the impact. The impact, okay, I don't have Dan. Um, Mark, I, 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 I missed your last point. Wrap up for me, uh, briefly. Thinking was that with the perception where people think consuming fish from wastewater is not clean or it's not a good practice, we really encountered that challenge. But we developed an intervention that addressed that. What we did was the waste, the treated waste water was rather used to grow good stock, and these good stock are not for direct consumption but rather we take egg from this good stuff send it into our on-site hatchery where we produce fingerless from it is this fingerless that are halted in a concrete tank and this concrete tank receives clean water from underground which has nothing to do with waste water Great. so it is this Fish caught in the concrete tanks that are that they are rather consumed, but not the one from the wastewater directly. That is the way that is eventually be put in place to address the culture perception. Mark, thank you very much for your time this afternoon. And so.